What's up, Mark Bell's Power Project Familia? This episode is brought to you by Free Sleeve. Now, I've actually gotten asked before in terms of injury recovery, what's better, compression or ice? And then I was thinking, why not both? And that's the cool thing about Free Sleeve because their knee and elbow sleeves are sleeves that you can put around the knees or elbows that provide a good amount of compression, but also it's it's cold. It's an it's an ice. It's not an ice pack, but it, it compresses you with cold. And they're really, really awesome because the cool thing about it is I like to use it a few hours after training. I can walk around the house, do what I need to do at night, and I can have my elbow and knee sleeves on without even remembering that they're there. It's pretty amazing. Drop the straps, wraps, ice packs, and just freeze it, sleeve it, and relieve it. Head over to freesleeve.com. That's F-R-E-E-Z-E-S-L-E-E-V-E dot com at checkout enter promo code power 25 for 25 percent off your order and free shipping on all domestic orders like if i was like dude break that like you could just feel it there's yeah, really not much you can do break. yes i'd is... be able to dent it by spiking it on the ground yes yeah, it's not yeah <laughs> try to <laughs> smash yeah. andrew with it <laughs> again <laughs> sorry about that andrew i didn't mean to do that last time did he fuck you up too andrew dude he's so mean to he's us. been bullying everybody he's so mean and then people are like, oh man, I don't learn, I don't learn jujitsu to like mess with people, dude. Like, it's not like that. And then we find out the opposite is true. Right, Andrew? People that are closest to them in their life that are suffering. Nobody else. Lots hurt, of us are hurt, suffering. Hurt people, hurt people. We got to talk to your lady about this. <laughs> <laughs> if you could find her. <laughs> we heard her. We heard, heard the scream from her falling out of the closet that one day. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I'm struggling again over here. I don't understand why our streamer thingy is just being silly. It shows talk. us that we're live. It's your first day. <laughs> first day on the job. Throw me right into the fire. Yeah, I was watching something yesterday with, uh, it was uh, Real Sports. Fuck it, we'll do it. And there was these kids uh, just making millions of dollars playing video games. Oh, yeah, sick. on Twitch. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, I, I'm aware of it. I've, I've seen some stuff before, but uh this one kid won like a championship and he won three million bucks Fortnite. yeah that was uh yeah i think his name was booga or yeah 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 something something like that it's yeah like, yeah b-u-g-u -U or something mm -hmm. whatever the heck his name is on that's like his handle or whatever yeah it was unbelievable and they were just there was a kid that was 20 and he was like i'm out the game <laughs> <laughs> he's like i'm too old man he's like i can't keep up with these kids and they, they show these kids like in their room and the you know the um the screen is like super close to them and it's just like flashing and it's going so damn quick you're like how the hell are they figuring this shit out it's it's Practice. honestly it's like the uh the progression of powerlifting where you, you like you, you think a powerlifter strong a few years ago and they're like this 25 year old lifter but then you see this 18 year old that's doing some ridiculous stuff and then this 15 year old a few years later that's doing ridiculous stuff like the stuff you see that guys used to do in certain games there are these 12 year olds that they're just doing everything else wow. at super fast speeds faster than anybody else that's why everyone's like I, I can't i can't play with these kids well they were showing how the sponsors you know how like nike years ago uh would go after people like lebron you know they'd go after high school kids and then they would go after like i think lebron was recruited and just looked at probably since the time he picked up basketball yeah. you know mm -hmm. and but now these kids that are playing video games there's a kid that was like man i, I want to say he was like five <laughs> and he's like playing this game and he's saying all this cute stuff and then he's like sipping on his sippy cup in between <laughs> in, in between and they were like this kid they're like this kid's got a crazy amount of promise like we're going after him hard and i was like Sick. what and they have agents and stuff mm -hmm. uh the agent that they have um we should actually see if we can get the guy on the show hell yeah um he used to be an agent for like hollywood actors and actresses and he's like i he's like i've been around for a long time and he's like, and I tell people that these kids are more famous than any of the actors that they know. And he's like, people don't believe me. He's like, but check out this footage. And they showed footage of like, they shut down like city blocks and all kinds of stuff. And he had to ask the, uh, like the mayor of the town to allow them to have more time because there's more and more kids just kept showing up. He's like, please give all these kids an opportunity to see these are like, and the mayor said yes, but like, he didn't get it. He was mm -hmm. like, I don't. He's like, I'm sorry, I don't understand like who you have, <laughs> you know, forgive me for not knowing, you know, what's going on. But uh, the guy was like, I just trust me, you know, it'll be good for everybody. Just shut down the whole block and let everyone see them and, and that'll be that. And then everyone can go on their way. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. These things fill stadiums, man. 
Like, oh heck like, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So are you gonna you going PS5 or Xbox Series PS5. X? Weird. Yeah. When's this stuff coming out? I don't remember. I didn't get to pre-order mine, but I think like next month, November. November twelfth, and yes, I did pre-order the Xbox Series X. What are we talking about money wise nowadays? Mm, PS5s are around five four to five hundred. There's two oh, okay. versions, four hundred, okay. one five hundred. So it didn't exponentially like skip up too crazy. Nah. No, because which But all in your what, seven hundred bucks because you need to probably another extra controller or something. Controller shit, or, for sure. True. Yeah. yeah. There's always like a couple <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely some. Yeah. And then so like with like Xbox like you have to get the xbox live which i don't know what that costs per year uh, but oh you got like a member membership thing yeah so that way you could play their online like library of games do like you guys ever 40 bucks yeah. you guys ever play against each other we haven't not no anything, not yet. no what about smoke you guys ever play against smokey because uh, he plays yeah he has xbox i don't have xbox uh, he plays so on. i actually I, this is my first xbox ever oh yeah i haven't had so the only system i have is the N nintendo switch and before that was a ps3 so like i missed a whole generation mm -hmm. but no at, uh, at the arnold one year we all me and griff me and griffy had both of our switches going and then Smokey jumped in to play mario kart and he he's really good at that he smoked a lot of us it's about chris right Chris Griffin, yes, yeah. yeah, but then Smokey beat all of us. Oh, that's surprising. Yeah, wow. I think I think Smokey would be good at Mario Kart in real life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could see that. I think he's good at bursting people's bubble. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and popping your balloon. <laughs> so I could see him doing some shit <laughs> passing by. What the, oh, that's great. What's funny is actually they have like a almost real life Mario Kart now. Uh, it it uses a camera on an actual Mario Kart and you drive it around your house, but you play on your Switch and on the Switch, it's like VR layer, what, uh, augmented reality. So as you're you know driving around your kitchen, you see shit all like, you see your kitchen and then you see all kinds of other stuff. But you're not racing other people, right? Because I feel like you, you need some space. You, you can race up to four people at once. What? And then if you run into the walls, you can get speed boost. Like it's... <laughs> When you're racing people, when you, <laughs> a speed boost from running into the wall. No, 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 no not, not sorry. Like I'm saying you can run into walls like in uh -oh. the game and that'll slow you down. But then uh -oh. you can also hit like, you know, get like mushrooms and shit and take out. It's, it, it, it's very like in its early stages. Right. Yeah. But like, imagine what, like the, like you can eventually do some cool shit. With imagine that. a bunch of kids like flying by and like your front lawn and you're like, what the fuck? And they're playing Mario, Mario Kart. Kart. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys heard of uh, Among Us? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. you, you saw AOC. My son plays it. <laughs> you, you saw, mm. I'm not surprised. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez or whatever the uh, the senator. So she recently played it with a bunch of like YouTubers and stuff to try to get people to vote. But apparently they were like on one stream there were 400 thousand people watching. But the thing about Among Us is everyone comes in with their own platforms and they stream together. Mm. So she was playing with ten other people who also had like maybe another 200 to 300,000 people watching. Damn. Whoa. So just multiply 200,000 by 10. There are 2 million people watching these people <laughs> oh play Among gosh. Us at one time. Wow. That's it was sick. crazy. What's Among Us? Like, what is it? Yeah, I, I okay. have no idea. Actually. So I haven't played it, but pretty much it's like um, a whodunit video game. So like, wow. it's like you, you guys all have these characters and there's one person that you guys need to figure out who's killing everybody else. Mm. So there's like a bunch a little of little bit like knives out or something like that. Exactly. Exactly. So someone dies and then the group gets together and then they talk and they're like, okay, well I was here. I was here. I that saw him here. Cool. And yeah. So if you accuse somebody, you just kick him off the ship, but that might not be the person. <laughs> right. Right. So that's, that's how it is. I haven't played it yet, but like, it's, it's really cool. Like it, people, and the, the cool thing about it is that the graphics suck. It's like, okay, that's what I was wondering. Game. Like, I didn't know if this was it or not, but, but it's the interactive aspect of it that people like, they can mm. just like really just talk to each other and figure out who did what. So I wonder when they make games, like if that's, if the starting position is like, what they're going to do with the graphics. Like, I wonder where they start. Like, are they just going to be like, Hey, let's just, let's just make this game real simple in terms of the way that it looks so mm -hmm. that it can be really cool and interactive. Cause it doesn't sound like you always have an option to have both, you know? Yeah. It's <clears throat> rare. And when you do, yeah. Yeah. But what's Fortnite? <laughs> what is Fortnite? Yeah, what do we got going on with Fortnite? I, I don't know much about any of this stuff. It's Jake, I mean, I've, seen, I, I've seen them play it, but yeah. I don't really know. It's cancer. Yeah, I never played Fortnite either. I didn't. So Fortnite is a uh, it's what's called a battle royale game. Mm. Okay, so I mean you, you've seen um you've seen shooters, right? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Fortnite is like when you have a hundred people on a map all trying to kill each other mm. instead, and so it's like everybody gets airdropped and put in random places of the map, and they all have to find weapons and kill each other. That's Fortnite. 
So it's like a hundred people. Oh, I see it. Yeah. 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 I never got into that one. I don't think I've seen, I don't think I've seen them play Fortnite that much. I think, uh, maybe they were playing Fortnite more on their phone. I think. Mm, yeah. There's Fortnite think, on the phone too. I think he was playing Warzone when we were in Bodega. Mm. He loves that game. Yeah. And Warzone's the same idea, kind of. It's a battle royale. Mm -hmm. Everybody's coming. Warzone looks like something I can get into. I mean, I tried to mess around with it for a minute, but it was like, I, I got a long way to go. Well, the, the, <laughs> I got a lot of learning to do. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, because the, the learning curve on these games now is really hard because everyone's way better than you. And no matter how good you get, you're going to find somebody that's better than you. So when you actually have like no experience, you, I mean, you're lucky if you survive a couple of minutes per round. What was the first game that, uh, like kind of flipped all this upside down? Do you guys, was there a particular game that kind of, in my memory, it was, uh, Half-Life. So Team Fortress Classic, which was like, a uh, you know, player versus player or team versus team, which led to Counter-Strike which was the same thing, but more of that Call of Duty type thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's definitely going to be something older than that, but that was it. That was it for me. And so I played that in junior high and high school. So like mid, late 90s. No, late 90s. Sorry, not mid. Early 2000s, put it that way. Damn. As far as like online play, I, I want to say that that was like the first one that actually like was gigantic. Mm -hmm. For me, at least, I'm sure. I don't know. Hopefully, somebody in the comment section. Can when I was when I was a kid, and you know, we had some of these games coming out. Like it was this was like later on because um, I started playing like when I was really young. But uh, I think it was 007, which was like oh, yeah, kind no, of the totally. first. Yeah, you know, and I'm not talking about like modern day. That's why I was asking you guys more modern day, like internet type stuff. But that 007 game was like just it was really really it was just it was just groundbreaking. Like they mm -hmm. just, there really wasn't anything like it at the time. And I just remember like all of my friends were playing it all. Mm -hmm. Like I got in, I played it a little bit, but I was more of an NBA live, uh, Madden football. Like yeah. I, I played the sports games. I always liked sports. So, uh, they just called to me a little bit more. And I I'd always sucked at these games. I'd always just keep running into the wall. <laughs> I couldn't like see anything or do anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, junior high, we would go over to my buddy Jesse's house and he had an N64 and a big screen TV. Mm. It made everything blue, but it was big. So we could have all four, uh, you know, um, screens in oh, one. Oh, that's cool. And looking at it now, I'm like, there's no crosshairs. Like how the hell did we ever, yeah. how did we ever connect with anybody? And what's dope is uh, they actually made a sequel to this and ended up being like one of the dopest games on the N64 called Perfect Dark. <laughs> Look at that guy's hands up. <laughs> uh, but they somehow lost the license or something happened. So it was going to be 007, oh. blah, blah, blah. But they turned it into Perfect Dark and that game is sick. And if you have a copy of it, it's actually worth like this a ain't decent bad. amount of money. This ain't bad graphics wise for how old it, it is. It might have. It, it looks like it's definitely upscaled mm -hmm. or maybe it's like a... Um, like a computer mod or something or an emulator yeah, sorry because yeah. it, it does look way clear you guys get into minecraft or is that more for like little kids no nah, i played a little minecraft back yeah, in the day. but mine bit. minecraft is um like it's just like a world that you can kind of make and create and do just about anything right yeah, yeah that's yeah. That what it is they, they have like a survival story mode where like you get nothing and then it's up to you to build everything find everything mine everything and then they have like a sandbox mode where you get everything you just go nuts building it's uh digital legos is in my is. in my Very family much. we noticed that like when the kids are like playing the game or when they're shortly done at, with the game and we asked them like, "Hey, can you take out the garbage?" Or can you, like, they just don't respond to anything. They don't do anything. <laughs> oh, no. Really? And um, we were talking about it one day, and I was like, "Well, I, I think you know, think about like, they literally just came from doing anything that they want, kind of, <laughs> you know. Like, I, that's my understanding of the game is that you can kind of do, you can you build your own world. Yeah. I don't, can you, you build houses? Can you kill people and stuff too? Or yeah. not really? You, you yeah. can kill zombies and yeah, yeah. So you there you hunt. Go. Yeah. You, you can, get pigs. You cook them." Yeah, you can sort of do it's whatever you dope. want, right? And yeah. then now you're being asked to like do like a chore. Yeah. And you're like fuck that. <laughs> That's really funny that they just don't respond and choose not to do anything after playing Minecraft. That's great. Yeah, I've been deep into uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon Three. They re-released it. I never understood that. It's in you. so much fun, dude. Oh my god. It's what about Pokemon Go? <laughs> that was a crazy, that was a crazy that thing that exploded, crazy but that was like little kids, right? Kind of nope, like, nope. I no. was part of that. <laughs> <laughs> I had a homie so that came still, from the UK. Yeah, they was, still have it. They still have, but I, I don't play it anymore. But when it first started, it like ignited because like 
it I was grew huge. up with Pokemon. Yeah. yeah. So like, it, like all of us, we were like, I, oh fuck, let's go catch some Pokemon. <laughs> <in> my life. <laughs> we're I up wish till I could, 2 a.m. <laughs> I wish I could remember the. Uh, I wish I could remember the stat, but there's a stat that they have where they talked about how many iPhones were sold and how many different things were sold, but then how quickly Pokemon like took off. And yeah. it was like, <clears throat> I'll just make up an example, but it was like, uh, let's say the first uh, laptop sold, you know, a hundred thousand within a year. Right. And say the first iPhone sold a million within a year, this Pokemon thing did like 500 million in like four days or something. It was something yeah. like just completely astronomical where you're like, Holy shit. Yeah, dude. All those nineties kids went out and started catching Pokemon in different neighborhoods and stuff. There was a neighborhood. Pokestop. <laughs> Pokestops. Yeah. There was a neighborhood in Citrus uh, Heights. And I don't know, Andrew, you don't pay attention to Pokemon, but it had this, for some reason, this neighborhood <laughs> had like a nest of this really rare Pokemon Dratini. Okay. It's the precursor to Dragonite for all my Pokemon fans. But we I so, just picture it seems <laughs> hanging out there being like, I found <laughs> Bruh, there were there were cars at eleven PM midnight yep. driving around this suburban neighborhood trying to catch Dratinis. And the people in the houses were getting so pissed because they're like, why are all these people driving around our houses? <laughs> so good. I'm telling you, hella people were just over there trying to catch stuff. It was it was bad. Yeah. It was really bad. Our uh, our our routes for driving <laughs> like to and from like certain houses were altered because we had, oh, there's a Pokestop over there. All right. So now we know that that fountain is a Pokestop. So yeah. we'll go that way. Oh, God. Uh, I never downloaded it on my phone, but Jasmine liked it. So mm -hmm. we had it on Stephanie's phone. And yeah, we would go for walks and go Pokemon hunting. They got people active. Yeah. But have you guys heard about how, how, how like uh, valuable Pokemon cards are right now? Or they've been valuable, but like Since people are Pokemon getting into Go, it. Yeah, it got, they skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because I think like a lot of baseball and football and basketball cards, they really lost a lot of their value over the years. Maybe mm -hmm. they've kind of gone back up. I'm not sure, but I know that, you know, Gary Vee was big into it. Yeah, yeah, he can't even talk about the cards that he gets because it will be a huge spike in that card's value. Uh, it's crazy that that one man can change the entire <laughs> landscape of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's been yeah. like way into that from the time he was a kid we got our bo jackson card right here i believe that's a rookie too right yeah it is yeah it's sick and it's just kind of a random photo too it's just mm -hmm. like him just he's on the bench which mm -hmm. like he was always playing his ass off doing something cool and i just got a picture of him randomly on the bench and for the hardcore card collectors it's in a very flimsy plastic cover mm -hmm. <laughs> you know that's i mean i understand cards but i also just like don't understand cards because like there, there's this you know, there are cards that are super expensive, but like there's a Charizard card that's $200,000 or worth $200,000. Mm. I just don't get it. I get it again, but yeah, I, I could never are, get into it, I guess. I think things are worth, uh, they say they're worth whatever someone will pay for them. Yeah. You know, like sometimes somebody has a nice house and the house might be, you know, 300,000 bucks, but somebody else really wants it. It has like mm -hmm. some value. They, they, um, I, I heard a story about, um, a former baseball player. He just, he bought someone's house like right there on the spot and it, it was, it was an expensive home, but it wasn't you know, over the top, it was like 500,000 or something. Um, but he bought it and turned it into, he turned the whole area into like a car wash. He just had this vision. Shit. Then he wanted to put a car wash. It was a uh, Lenny Dykstra, the famous oh, baseball okay. player. And then he, he just had a, a whole thing of like car washes throughout the whole uh, area. And he wow. just, he just crushed it from a financial perspective. He just, yeah, just oddly just had, but yeah, it's just uh, any of these things are worth whatever, you know, whatever, you know, if you're a Raider fan and you like football, then mm -hmm. maybe the Bo Jackson card has a little more uh, value. I think nostalgia is important too for a lot of people. And so yeah. maybe they're, maybe they're trying to buy back some of their youth, you know, yeah. reminds them, takes them back. You know, this is probably from 1988, you know, mm -hmm. something like that. Or so maybe it takes them back to that time. Yeah. Well, the, <clears throat> the most recent, like, sports card craze started well i don't know if it started but like this is what like it put it put it on a lot of people's radar it was a michael jordan lebron james card it was like mm. a combo card that had a piece of like their game worn jerseys in the card what uh this, this crazy. isn't this isn't really fair but any guess is how much that one sold uh i know it's tough but 650 thousand okay anybody else Man, I don't know. Yeah, I know it's, 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 that's cool. Nine hundred thousand dollars. Damn. So when people see saw that, it's like, hey, Gary V, like, what's up with this? And so that's when he's like, I've been telling you guys for years, and then so it, it's now like picked back up. Yeah, like a lot, I should say. 
Wow. It's fucking dope. But that's you guys ever think there'll be well maybe there maybe it's already here ish. Um do you think that fitness and nutrition will be like gamified? Maybe maybe enough to where it can be like really kind of fun and it can get a lot of people involved. Like, uh, let's say you did your 10 minute walk, you did your, you know, you did a couple things the right way and you picked up points for it mm -hmm. and you can be like, Oh shit. And Seema's only got 10 points today, but I got 20, <laughs> you know, and you, can, <laughs> yeah. you can be in like a little battle with people. I guess everyone would kind of lie about it though. So I don't know what you would, but maybe, maybe there could be a tracking device. Maybe it's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that people do get involved in this with their steps, right? They mm -hmm. can, you can kind of be in a, I don't know how any of it works. I never tried it, but I think you can be in like a walking club and things yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, there's already that Nintendo Switch game. I'm like, just pulling it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ring Fit Adventure. But as far as what Mark's talking about, though, I don't know if you can like compete against other people. I know there's the step count and all that stuff. But it could get, I guess it could get really dumb, too. Like it can get, it could start out healthy and then start out very unhealthy, right? Because like... Like, oh, I'm in a caloric deficit. And it's like, well, you haven't eaten in four days. You know? Oh, yeah. And it's like, that wouldn't be good either. So, you uh, know, but honestly, the, the, the way that looks kind of cool. Yeah. It's, 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 t it's very, yeah. You'll build up a good sweat doing some of these things. Huh. But you know, the, the, the interesting, the interesting thing when you mentioned gamifying fitness is like CrossFit did that. You know what I mean? Cause Absolutely. like they, they took all these athletes and put them on against each other, yeah. you know? So CrossFit did that. And if, if like, if we could do that in a similar way with like, I guess, levels of difficulty and things that people are interested in, like walking or running, actually running's probably that there's already something that's being done with that to an extent. But yeah, I, I think that we're close to getting, I guess, some more things this as far as lifting sick. and game fight. Yeah. And the, the, I like want to try. <laughs> the, I can bring it in. We, we can play. Griffin uh, wanted to make a video. I know. Doing this. Yeah. Because actually it's, it looks really dope. We and there's stuff can. where you squat. Like there's, there's one where like you're squatting and you're jumping and you're doing crazy stuff. Like it, it, yeah. it's Yeah. And I guess the, the planks are actually pretty hard. Cause so you put one of the, uh, it's a, oh, let's see, a little beat. The, um, the joy cons like on a strap around your leg. Mm. So that's how it measures your squat depth. That's ah. how it measures if you're actually in a plank. And then that ring that he has around his, or that he's holding kind of like a controller almost. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So there's, yeah, that ring is actually like, it's not easy to squish. Like you can, of course, yeah, it's not impossible, mm. but it like for a kid, it's a thick ring. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty good, dude. Like, so there's, um, maybe you can look this up too. There's lifting equipment now that will count your reps. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have seen any of that before, but that's kind of interesting. I guess they have it at Piedmontese at the, at the Piedmontese HQ. My brother was wow. using it and it, it tells you how many, what well, that's kind of neat. Yeah. Cause imagine if you, uh, you know, you start your set and you're like, oh, that weight feels pretty good for me. Try like a set of 10. And you could see the number and you're at eight. It'd be motivation to get to 10. And then maybe even just, so you might say, screw it and try to go for a few more. But seeing that number there, because I, I mean, you do count in your head and that helps. But how much does it help when someone's like five more, you know, someone throws that out there mm. and you were, you were thinking two more mm -hmm. and they said five more. You're like, all right, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll try it. I'll try to go to, I'll try to go to five more. Yeah. No, there's, there's, there, there, like, if there are apps that gamify habits, because there are apps that, like, have games in terms of the way you build certain habits, and there's going to be more things in terms of gamifying fitness. And that'll be pretty dope. See what happens. Yeah, that looked, that looked like it was, would be fun. Like, yeah, kind of like, cool. And the guy didn't look like he was killing himself either. That's what I liked about it, is it, it didn't look, I mean, it looked like he was exercising, mm -hmm. but it didn't look crazy, you yeah. know, and I think that might be, uh, a kind of a key factor what's up with the mirror thing you guys seen the commercials for the mirror mm, i have that looks pretty interesting so that is that a little bit like a peloton type of gimmick where you got someone kind of leading you through a workout i think yeah. that's sort of what it is right and that looks pretty cool i've only seen the ad and from the ad it just looks like there's a trainer on the other side doing something and you're, you're like emulating them but i'm not sure mm. i'm not really sure we should try some of this shit out oh, that'd be so i think fun. it'd be pretty cool i think you can go to um one of those big shows there's like an ursa show every year um it's a trade show and mm -hmm. then it has all the equipment um just man i just think any anything that gets people moving around but imagine if we can gamify a lot of stuff and have our have our youth getting mm -hmm. into exercise a little bit more because 
maybe the story would be different rather you know we we talk so much about kids don't get outside anymore but why don't we just kind of like i always think about elon musk why don't we elon musk the situation elon musk knows that people are going to be distracted when they drive so he's like let's just make something that drives for you yeah <laughs> you know uh we know that kids are going to be in their room so let's maybe uh think of ways that they can simulate being outside just on their games since they already love video games and they love their tablets mm -hmm. and they love their phones and mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah we got jasmine just dance so oh, she'll yeah. be yeah jumping around dancing for like i don't know like an hour and a half straight mm -hmm. dance dance revolution i played DDR that was fun <laughs> that game's hard dude yeah once you get the like once you like understand how to like i don't know it just becomes I blame the I blame the equipment all the time. Like you know, this thing like it, it didn't keeps, register. It, yeah, you keep stomping on it. Yeah, and you're like, <laughs> it's kind of like the old arcade games. They just wouldn't. They were so slow to respond. Uh huh. Like when you played like Pac Man and shit, you're like, I mm. moved the guy. I pointed the arrow the other way for like a minute ago, and yeah. then the thing takes a while to start heading the other direction. Make that turn super early, man. That's so. I know. I know. You got to plan for that shit. That's definitely the go to move. Like whether it's a fighting game but especially like madden like dude i told i pressed the button it didn't like that's not that's not on me this game's cheap <laughs> yeah, this, game, this, game, this game sucks yeah so we've been going 25 minutes about video games best day ever yeah we've been rambling about nothing but i like it <laughs> yeah good stuff i like it let's keep it going i think okay. you know i think a key factor though in terms of like a video game to kind of relate it over into fitness is to just find things that are fun and interesting you know and then what can you find i think maybe sometimes people are forcing themselves to do stuff that they really don't enjoy that much <clears throat> and then like where how do we if we don't like anything with fitness and we don't like anything health related and we don't have taste buds for it really they're not really built up yet yeah you know how do we how we get started dude that's the thing though like I wonder how, how can we turn the different things we do into fitness and turn in, into like a video game? Cause like when I look at like BJJ, it's kind of like a video game for me. Like I really like, that's why that's one of the reasons why I look forward to it because it's like, for me, it's like a fighting game, <laughs> right? And there are different techniques and you can get better at these techniques over time. That's really how I look at it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like, I can't wait to go back and train more, you know? Yeah, I think um, this this would be sick. So I remember it was like Madden 90, I don't know, 96 something. Uh, when you would create a player, mm -hmm. you, you would do the combine <laughs> and like you'd have to do your 40 time and you'd have to, oh, yeah, you had yeah. to press the buttons as fast yeah. as you could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what if like, so NBA 2K has my player. Yeah. What if it tracked your workouts and depending on how good your workout was or how Like often, your real life workouts? Your real life workouts. Okay. That's how strong your guy gets. Yeah, and that's how fast your guy can get. I think that would, dude, that would motivate the hell out of me. <laughs> no, that that'd be really do like you could implement that into a lot of different videos. Guys, all too. jacked on the court. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you can't shoot for shit, but he's <laughs> maybe like, but maybe it gives you a little bit like may maybe it uh, like boosts you up to like pro level because uh -huh. like if you ran like a forty and you ran like a six point oh forty, <laughs> it'd be nice if it gave you like a four nine or something. Oh, ran on a <laughs> curve. Yeah, 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 yeah great. Great. Grades you on a curve. It's like, hey, look, we know that people are going to really suck when they go to do some of these things. Let's give them a little. When they go to do uh, 225 bench for reps or whatever, let's have them do 135 or something, you know. No, that, yeah. would, be, uh, that would be pretty cool. That would be dope. I, I always like that. I always like that part of the game where you could... Uh, you know, make your own, make your own person. And then it was like, so much fun, but it's weird though, too. Cause it's like, you just jack everything through the roof, you know, <laughs> well, 99, 99, yeah. 99. So that's the, the, the problem with NBA 2k right now. Like you can grind it out, but it would take you like an entire game cycle. Mm -hmm. Like as far as like, Oh, it's 2k 21 by 2k 22. I might be worth a damn. So they do all the microtransactions and that's, yeah. what's a huge problem with a lot of the video games. Now on top of that, NBA 2K21 is a $60 game and they have unskippable ads now mm. within Ooh, the game. Damn. That's tough. That's messed up. Dude, like, come on. Like, I guess if it was like a free to play game mm -hmm. or I don't know, maybe you can, like a, you can have a, a, you can purchase a like cheaper one that has in game ads or something like yeah. a free app or something. But yeah, that's, that's tough. But creating your player nowadays, like they have like a whole storyline. They have like, you know, 
like a whole story like you you come up from like the hood and you're like no matter what skin color you are you usually have like a super slang like urban like slang and voice and stuff so it's pretty funny but it's i mean for me it's entertaining i haven't played one in a long time but that was where i spent a majority of my time on nba 2k was creating a my player i think the microtransaction thing is kind of funny because it's like they're saying, okay, this is this is just kind of like real life, guys. Mm-hmm. If, if you want to get ahead, you spend a little bit of money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so give us more money if you want to get ahead faster. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. But, but that little bit of money adds up. Hey, no, they have some people. They, they call them whales, but they'll end up spending oh. hundreds of, like, some people have spent tens of thousands of dollars on a single game to, like, get their characters more stuff. I know some little kids that have done that, like kind of by accident, not understanding your credit were, card. Yeah, yeah. My Whew. one of my nephews. That's rough. <laughs> yeah, uh, he was t- he was telling his mom like, oh, I got like all these new skins and new outfits on Fortnite. I got this. I got that. She's like, man, like, dang, son, like you must be like killing it. Like, I, I want to see <laughs> how you doing, son. <laughs> and then she sees and she's like, wait, how do you like how do you get all these? And he's like, oh, you you uh, you get uh, v-, v bucks, v ducks. <laughs> <laughs> that's how little he is she's like v-ducks okay like can you show me exactly how to get a v-duck and then he goes in the options and it's like look right here you know 2500 v-ducks or whatever so he ran up i think a 600 hundred dollar bill on Fortnite, and they're like okay no more <laughs> so like obviously they cut the credit card but uh they couldn't get their money back it was tough oh, this God. free-to-play game they spent 600 dollars on you know the thing though too that they're trying to get with microtransactions because the way those are done they're done kind of like a, a las vegas casino slot so the thing is is like the more kids do microtransactions because they can randomly get a really great item but it's like yeah. a 0.05 percent chance they'll keep trying to get the item no matter how much they lose they're going to keep trying to get the item so it gets them addicted <laughs> to trying to get they pulling, keep pulling uh-huh. the, they keep pulling the slot so it's 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 a messed up way the way microtransactions are being done these days that is really screwed up yes yeah. yeah well i mean and then you know social dilemma like the same people are also developing these mm. you know microtransactions that get you addicted mm-hmm you know, and you're right. It's like, oh, what, but man, this time though, I'm definitely going to get, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. That super rare gun in Fortnite. I think there's something really weird about video games. That's like, maybe just not, maybe we just don't think about it at all. Cause we're just thinking about it just purely as being fun. Some people just consider it a giant waste of time. Other people can kind of put it in a category of like entertainment. Um, but I think that you don't really. Uh, maybe you don't know what you're doing actually, but you are kind of, you're trying to solve problems. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's a, it's like a puzzle, you know, you're trying to, you know, have your character jump a certain way. So it doesn't fall and die. And when they do fall and die, you know, it's, you don't cry about it. You don't get all like, I mean, maybe if you're like a little kid and <laughs> you're not used to it or whatever, but <laughs> then you, you recognize that you have another opportunity to try it again. And you're like, oh, well, let me just, I'll just try something a little differently. So I think we kind of, I think we undersell the fact that you are like, you are in the midst of like learning, you are like doing things. And I don't know what, you know, how you can extrapolate those things out and make them make sense into the real world all the time. But you are, it's, it wouldn't be any different if we just all sat down and worked on a puzzle. I don't think Mm. it's to me, it's like kind of the same. Like you have these pieces of the puzzle and you try this one here and that one doesn't fit or that color doesn't match up. It's like, oh, I'll try that one. Oh, if I put this one in this way, that one fits perfectly. Oh, if I have the guy jump this way at this time. Oh, when I run into the turtle, the turtle kills me. But if I jump yeah. on the turtle's back, I can skip it and kill the other turtle. You know, it's like uh, just a, a series of like breaking things down. Mm-hmm. Do you think you lo- that's what you like about jujitsu? Like, do you kind of you kind of break it down you know if somebody gets you in something you get caught in something or you learn a new move are you thinking about how do you how do i how do i kind of start over like your guy died and you tap <laughs> tapped out right mm-hmm. tapping out same as dying i guess right you tap out and then you get a chance to restart and that let's try that again sort of thing honestly i think that's that's literally exactly it if if we just stop there there's nothing more i have to say about it but like there's so many different techniques and there's so many people in in class that are so many levels above you that once somebody mm. gets you in a certain technique you can ask them hey how do i not get caught by that again you can do the same role again and then you won't get caught by it and then you've you've now unlocked the escape to that technique. Mm-hmm. It it really is exactly like that. But that's that's the fun part about it because 
there's so much to learn and mess up at and get better at that it just it doesn't really end at a certain point you know um so that that's that's why it's so enjoyable because there, there's and, and for each individual each person builds their own different type of style like there, there's so many people that are that that start off differently that work different guards that have a different style because of their body and they can build that and that's that's just why it's it's so fun that's why like the funny there's there's these funny memes about like andrew i don't know if you'd be able to find it but the the, the uh the unassuming guy in your jujitsu class that'll kick your ass like this is what he looks like and the picture is just like this this guy on a scooter just rolling by and it really is like that the guy that'll kick your ass in most jujitsu classes is like the most unassuming skinny guy that doesn't look like he works out but you roll with him and he just He's just like a he'll he'll fuck you up, <laughs> but that's a great that I think that's why people like it because of that you know all the different things you can do, it's it's a free reign, yeah. Some it's something like uh, trying to kill the bad guy at the end, and you keep getting to that same guy over and over again, and you're like, oh, I got to shoot him in the eyeball, <laughs> 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 I got to shoot him like from this angle in the eyeball, and then he lights up, and then eventually. He, he dies what i think and, is interesting about jujitsu is that like uh at, versus a video game is the fact that like you might stay on the same board you know like so you know some games when you die you have to start all the way back from the beginning mm -hmm. but most of the time you kind of restart so if we were working on something uh and i was able to catch you in something you'd probably say hey shit how'd i get stuck in that and I'd say okay yeah. well let's go back to this position we wouldn't go back to the beginning we wouldn't go back to standing and this is how you ended up, you know, here, right? You yeah. kind of re then you can kind of think about it in reverse and stuff like that. Yeah, there's that, but then there's like there's also the um, the the fact that like in, in class, even though you're sparring with all these people, number one, they're not your enemies, but there there might be a few people that continue to wreck you in the same way over and over. So there's this guy Julian. We train together all the time. He's hey, like you mentioned him before. I mentioned him before. I mentioned him again. He's like this 170, 175 pound black belt. And for like years, literally years, like he, he'd, he'd molly me every single role. He'd just wreck me, wreck me, wreck me. And I was like, and he'd always be the guy that I asked questions to because he's super analytical. But, you know, we, we've, we've gotten to a point that now, like, usually we don't tap each other. Sometimes I'm finally able to tap him. Sometimes he taps me. But now it's like, okay, I got to a point where I can finally figure out how to pass this dude's crazy guard because his legs going all over the place, right? It, it doesn't work anymore. So the next time it's like you're inching closer and closer and closer towards being able to match and potentially beat an individual. And there are so many of these same type of people in a class. But the cool thing is, when you go to another school and we can't go to other schools yet but when you go to another school and do their open mat then you can see how you fare against <laughs> all these other characters <laughs> in this other school and, and see how you do and that that's that's the dope thing about it it's just uh it's like a big old game like seriously <laughs> jiu-jitsu is a big game now you have a whole new set of shit to try to figure out when you're yeah. going with some new people that are different height different body weight i've never seen that move before different you know what i mean backgrounds mm -hmm. yeah different uh they have just different knowledge i also find it interesting too that you know i like to learn stuff a lot but there's also i think there's a component to like we we need you know, we need entertainment and we need like downtime like you need time to like not time to sleep necessarily because we know like sleep is really important but you sometimes just need like <clears throat> time with yourself or by yourself uh you need time to not learn like you can't just i i mean i hate to use the word can't but i don't think it's the smartest route to go to try to spend your entire day learning and quote unquote being the best i think that by taking a step back and playing a video game for a little bit or playing a game or finding a hobby i think is a, a a better way to do it because then you're going to be able to do all this for a lot longer and have a lot less stress people are a lot more relaxed people that you know go to the movies once you know a couple times a month or um i know i know some really smart people that when i ask them some questions i'm always kind of shocked i'm like wow i thought they would really be into like reading i thought mm -hmm. they would really be into but they like they love to watch like cartoons or something or they love to watch like south park or something <laughs> And you're like, wow, like I wasn't really expecting that. But I think it's because you you need something mindless in your life. You know, you need something that's uh, and, and maybe it's a little bit of an escape, you know, from just everything else. But I, I've I've learned for myself that 
you know, I, I've overdone it before where I'm like, okay, lifting, nutrition, like be on point and make sure you hit all these things. And then, you know, then I'll run into like a brick wall where I just don't really like it that much anymore. And I'm like, well, that, that's not a good way to go. That's not a good way to go about doing it. Cause normally I love this stuff. And so if I mix in a little bit of play, then I'm good to go. Yeah. I think hitting that, uh, that wall though is, su is super necessary. Moss all. Um, <laughs> but like, yeah, cause I, I did the same thing. Like, yeah, I, like I, I didn't play any video games from the time, like probably a, from like maybe a year before I ever met you, Mark, till I don't know, maybe like a year or two ago, like when I got a Nintendo Switch and it was like, nope, I'm putting everything into photography. Like there's nothing else because I, this is my goal and it thankfully it worked out, but I think you kind of do need to do that, you know, cause I know there's people out there like, oh, like Joe Rogan still smokes weed and he's super successful. It's like, yeah, but he didn't sw smoke weed till he was like 35 or mm -hmm. something like that. You know, it's like, okay, maybe he does like to go hunting now, but he wasn't doing that when he was grinding, like trying to get on any stage possible. So I think he's, you got it. You definitely have to have your hobbies, but like, just be careful. Like, don't justify them just because like you think you're working super hard. Mm. I, I have a question real quick. I'm curious what, what you guys thought to this, because this is something I've noticed. Um, if ever like, you know, maybe I was, I was training in the gym and I was working on some technique and it was just like the same for weeks, but maybe I had this impromptu break for maybe four or five days and then I came back something clicks like mm. some something something re works really really well after that break and it stays and it like I, and i noticed that in the gym but i noticed that a lot with jujitsu like when they were i'd be training and training consistently at, like every single week multiple days a week and then if there was a time that i just wasn't able to make it to the mats for like a four or five day period when i come back it's like some new weird things have clicked that i've never done before and it happens almost every single time so i think there really is something to going hard for a bit and then really distancing yourself. And you, for me, the distancing always happens, not because I want it to, but because there's something that happens that I just literally can't get back in there until a few days. And then I come back and then there's just something that clicks. And I'm just like, what the fuck, it happened again. And it's just like, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's like your brain has time to put things together when you're away and you're not engulfed in it. And then you come back with some new sense of, I don't know, something that, that, that that's finally happened in your mind. But I, it, it happens every single time. I'm just wondering, have you guys noticed that happen with anything that you do? I think uh, what you're referring to is just the human, uh, the humans are very adaptive. You know, we can really adapt to stuff. And so when you go to try to do something, and and that thing is fairly new you can adapt to it a little bit in the moment and you can kind of get some of it i can say okay i i can do this hold or okay i can you know run at this altitude but <clears throat> over time you're going to be able to adapt to it a lot easier and i think when you're talking about something that has a uh like an education and a learning component to it it's not just uh it's not really just physical strength it's there's a combination of things going on there I think it does take a while for it to ingrain into your head, but I think ultimately what's happening, and I think this is the, this is a very confusing part of life, but I think, you know, try not, you know, I think you're trying, you know, and I think when we try, we fuck everything up, mm -hmm. you know, um, you ever try to have somebody like you? Oh. <laughs> I mean, you ever try to have somebody love you? You ever try to like, you try to get somebody's attention? It's they they either want to be attentive to you because they find you attractive or they don't you know you can't be like yo like yeah. it just it makes it worse like they just they want nothing to do with you at that point <laughs> so i think uh trying is a really weird thing because i think that we we feel like we need to really try super hard and it's not really try it's do you need to when you are doing it when you're in the act of doing it you need to go at it with you know, everything that you have. And when it's time to take a break from it, it's time to take a break from it. But how many, I mean, we've seen this so much with a lot of the females that we've had on this podcast and uh, girls that we've talked to that do powerlifting and strongman, they end up with these fantastic bodies. And, but years before they were talking about how they were cardio bunnies and they, they were, mm -hmm. they were obsessed with their body weight mm -hmm. and they just wanted to lose weight and they were never happy with that weight. They, they weren't happy with the way they looked at all. And maybe they even did get to a point where they, uh, you know, weigh, weighed a little bit less, but they still weren't confident in their bodies. They started to stop. They basically stopped trying. They stopped trying that and they moved into something else. And now that kind of came automatic. 
Mm-hmm. That kind of came as as like the result. Um, I found that to happen a lot anytime I'm like writing something. Um, and I also found it a lot with learning. Um, but like writing, I, I've learned that if I'm like trying to write something and I get stuck, the the number one solution for it is just to get away from it, just to take a break from it. And I think uh, I'm not very mechanical, but I would imagine that if you're a mechanic or maybe your dad or somebody like that, like they, they work on something and they get so stuck and they're like, I don't even like remember like mm-hmm. <laughs> what I'm doing anymore. Does this spark plug go here? Does this go there? <laughs> and probably they take a couple days off from it and they mm-hmm. come back and it's like, oh, I just got to boom, put that there and the car starts up and you're like, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. I've definitely had a lot of moments like that. I think just kind of getting, getting away from it. And maybe your brain, I mean, we have our subconscious too, which is kind of always running. And I bet you it's thinking about that a lot, especially when you're interested in it. Mm-hmm. That's why I always bring up that fact that I think, you know, the single greatest marker of success is just how interested you are in something. And if you're not successful at it, it probably just means that you're not as interested as you thought because you're not aligning. You need to align everything together uh, with that interest in order to get there. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with uh, writing, like you said, like, there's times where I'm trying to write whatever. I'm just like, dude, why do you like, I'm quitting. Like I'm just going to use, I don't know, something else, some other platform other than writing or uh, medium and yeah, walking, going for a 10 minute walk, coming back. You, I don't know what that does, but it, it absolutely does work. I can't remember. Uh, we had, um, oh, what's the like speed golf guy? Mm. Oh yeah. Wow. Our speed golf buddy. Yeah. Kern. <coughs> there you go. Bra- Brad, Brad Kearns. Brad, Brad Kearns. Kearns. You nailed it. So asking him, like, dude, like, what happens when you get writer's block? And he's just, he, he laughed. And he's like, you just don't get it. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> you're a real writer. Sorry. <laughs> it was just funny because he just totally is like, you just don't deal with it. Or you, yeah, just deal with it because you don't get it. Yeah, there's like a little bit of a block and you just mm-hmm. go and do something else. Mm-hmm. And when you come back, I think also, too, it just gets you, uh, gets your mind off of it you start to think about other things and I think maybe it opens up your mind to whatever it is that you were, whatever it is that you were doing at the moment. I think another factor too, that I forgot to mention is just getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. That's where, yep. Back to video games. (laughs) So your emotions are, your emotions are huge. Yeah. You throw the remote across the room. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Especially during, so when you're saying like, oh, when you die, you just come back, you know, you, yeah, sometimes sometimes you're really pissed. Dude, Dude, no, that roguelike, Dude, this shit's a video game. No, because that's exactly it. You walk away from that shit because you're so mad. It might be two days. You come back and you're like, oh, fuck, that level was easy. (laughs) Dude, Dead Cells does that for me. Oh, my gosh. So, Mark, this is a... uh, So, it's... It's not like Mario, when you die, you kind of either start at the, that, that level with however many, like, one-ups you have left. (laughs) This one, you collect everything. You kind of... You do... This sounds like some real bullshit. (laughs) You yeah. you start at the same same spot every time, but the level changes every time you go in, wow. and then you kind of finish it, and you just keep kind of going in circles. Brutal. But you die, and that's it. You go back to the beginning of the you game. You go back to the beginning with nothing. Yeah, it sounds awful, but it's probably the the most game most uh, game bleh, played game I have right now because it's just so easy to pick up and play. Yeah, like I pick it up and then I die once. Like all right, I gotta go. <laughs> Just kidding. I, I definitely don't put die once. I, I keep going. I, I do think your uh, I think your emotions can help you solve problems to a certain extent, but I think that you would have to go through several of them. And so, like your frustration probably isn't really going to help in the moment, and your anger and saying you know fuck and and <laughs> being like disappointed in yourself and yeah. and then uh, and then what about when it settles in when you say that you suck? It's like oh, I just oh I just kind of suck at that. You know, and then you're, then you're really, then you're really screwed. Um, But when you leave, you'll probably run through the emotions and you'll, you'll go through it all in your head. Oh, I missed that squat because of this. Oh, I got tapped out because of that. And you think about it a lot and you're like, well, I did get pretty pissed and like that didn't seem to really help. And then maybe you kind of get, um, maybe you go through a different emotion. Maybe you kind of have, um, rather than some nervousness, maybe you have some like excitement about it. Like, oh, you know what? I could try this next time. And I bet you that would, I bet you that would be a good, uh, good solution. So I think the frustration side of things, you know, once that settles in, you can, (laughs) you can sometimes be in a lot of trouble. You know, it's funny because like when you think about, 
after you mentioned that video game thing, man, <laughs> I started thinking about all the times that I was like angry playing Andrew Dark Souls. Oh, is Andrew even? Oh, he's no, right there. Oh, yeah, that was the best. Yeah, no, no. And like playing Dark Souls or playing Dead Cells or playing any of those types of games where if you die, you go back to the beginning or like the level of the difficulty is really high, right? But then I thought about those times like in the gym where I just be really mad when doing a certain movement because it just wasn't working right. And when I get angry, I start doing things in an erratic fashion. I start doing things a little bit faster than I should mm. or putting a little bit more force than I should at the moment. I've that hurt I just myself wasn't. that way before. Boom. Exactly. But same thing with jujitsu. When I used to get frustrated with things, I would try to rush through it. I would try to like speed and it just wouldn't work. But with video games, when you get mad, you start pressing buttons a little bit faster and you <laughs> die more. You legit will die more because you're angry at what's going on. So it's just like, I love this man. It, it mm -hmm. just like it, all that all that stuff just ties together so well. Yeah, but there's nothing worse when you're playing fighting games against somebody that you can't beat. Ah, uh, that's the worst. They like the more the more mad you get, the, the easier, easier they it kill is because then they enjoy it and they start laughing <laughs> and start trying like some fancier moves and <laughs> and you get mad because uh, they look so good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was always fun though. Like oh, at the arcades God. though, like playing Street Fighter and yeah. you know you'd beat somebody, you feel so good. <laughs> Like, ah, oh, it sucks to be you, nerd. But <laughs> oh, man. I think, uh, you know, your emotions can <clears throat> can kind of assist you in making a decision, but usually it's not a very good one. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're dealing with here, too. I think even, even if you're, um, even being happy, you know, even being overly happy, you can make a poor decision. You could buy something that's too expensive or, you know, just uh, mm -hmm. in, in jujitsu terms, you could get yourself in a compromised position because you were so excited that you thought this other opportunity was there. Mm -hmm. You're super pumped. You're like, I'm going to do this to this guy. And then boom, it totally just <laughs> backfires on you. So I think uh, the emotional side of things is, 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 uh, is definitely a factor. I know that I've felt that uh, many times with lifting where I would do an exercise and something would kind of hurt and I was like, oh, I'll just put my belt on tighter or I'll just do this. I'll try to brace harder. And uh, just a general rule of thumb is like, it's not going to feel any better. Yeah. Like it's, you know, the more weight you put on, it's going to, the more weight you put on the bar, it's going to feel worse. And so you have to take your emotions out of it and you have to figure out a way to say, all right, well, yeah, yeah, this kind of stinks that this is in this situation for today, but, um, you know, I'm going to do a bunch of stuff that I can do. I'm not going to sit here and complain and, and focus in on all the stuff that I, that's not available to me at the moment because my knee is on fire and I'm in the middle of a squat workout, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, when your knee is killing you, you're not going to be able to do hardly any of the assistance exercises, but, uh, you have two options. You can either go home, which is totally fine. You can do that sometimes, uh, or you can find exercises that won't hurt your knee. You know, maybe you can do some back work. Maybe you can, maybe you can do some shoulders or maybe you can do some uh, ab exercises or, you know, there's always an option to figure out like, okay, well, th there's a bunch of shit I can't do, but let me just hone in and, and focus in on, on what I can do. And imagine your perspective if, um, you know, if, if, if you had a real tragedy happen, you know, your knees just inflamed for the day. Like, don't be such a baby about it. Don't be such a bitch about it. I mean, think about how grateful people are, uh, when they have a surgery and the doctor was able to recover, you know, uh, a portion of their leg so they didn't lose their whole leg, you know, like our buddy, the one legged monster and some of the other people that we know that went through these really tough things. They're like, hey, man, I'm just grateful to have the other legs still. And you're like, mm -hmm. shit, man. And then there they are deadlifting 600 pounds and stuff like that. And so I think, you know, trying to gain a little perspective, take a little step back and just say, all right, well, I'm a little effed up for today, but it's certainly not that big of a deal. You know, when you when you mentioned like taking emotion out of it, I it's weird because like I don't want people to think that you just become this zen being with no emotion on your face and whatever but i think the big thing is just kind of having a good attitude with everything because like when i think about it it's like okay initially when you were talking i was like okay maybe just being kind of excited but then when you're too excited <laughs> that can really backfire so you don't want to be too excited right um but if you just have a good attitude towards what you're doing then it doesn't matter if you're injured or if somebody taps you out if you get out of it and you're like okay well what happened here all right let's figure that out show me what you're doing if you have a good attitude towards the things that you're doing it, it, 
more often than not, you're going to be able to head towards the right direction. But once you start getting angry or frustrated or, <laughs> or if you're a little bit, again, if you're a little bit too happy, <laughs> right, it's just kind of weird. Um, things might not go in the best direction, but I don't think that I'm trying to think of like poking holes and just having a good attitude. Like, is there anything weird about that? Is there now anything wrong with that at all? No, there's nothing bad about it at all. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, you know, hearing Flex Wheeler talk about our boy Rhino and when Flex was talking about like when they would work out and Flex would just kill him with, with stuff and the other guys in the group would be like falling apart and these were also professional bodybuilders and Rhino would just look at Flex and he'd say, I love this shit, man. Mm -hmm. I love this shit. Like that's, <laughs> that's pretty damn cool. Like when you're going through stuff and you're having a rough day, maybe you can remember how much you actually love what you're doing. You know, like you're, what you're doing, maybe, like I said, maybe your knee hurts or maybe your back hurts and maybe you can't really do stuff the way that you love doing it. But do you love lifting? You know, do you love like, you know, what you're, do you love jujitsu? Do you love running? Whatever it is that you were currently doing, even if it's slightly taken away from you just a bit in general, do you really love that you have the opportunity to just do any of it in the first place? And the answer is probably yes. And then you can kind of, we've talked about this many times on the show, just being grateful. Oh yeah. Just damn grateful. I mean, how, like, it, that's another thing with like a video game. Like you get to play a video game, <laughs> you know, you get to play a game. You have time to play a game. You have a console that allows you to do it. You have streaming internet, you know, you have a nice TV, you have, you live in a nice place. Like shit ain't that bad, you know? So you just need to, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, sometimes we just need to kind of get over ourselves or get out of our own way. Mm-hmm. And it was uh, Doom that started everything. I don't ah. know if we played that one. So, I mean, technically, gaming histor historians will say Wolfenstein, but Doom, uh, the developers just kind of gave the code out. And they're just like, hey, do whatever you guys want to do with this. And sure enough, people started doing all kinds of weird mods to it. Mm. But that was the first one where I could connect to somebody and kick someone's ass, like, online. That That's was that cool. was the first one. I wanted to get that out there. We still need to play Worms. Oh yeah, you had it coming. I still never I'll played get worms. You. Oh god! All right, Andrew, take us on out of here, buddy. Yeah, I will. Thank you, everybody, for checking out today's episode. Uh, for you guys that are on the live stream, we are coming right back out. <laughs> Smokey just commented something funny. Um, we're gonna come right back with a call-in show. We're gonna call it Pick Six. We're we're gonna get six. Nice uh, shot. Six topics from you. So you guys get to kind of determine how the show's going to go. <laughs> oh, man, I have the camera on the other side. <laughs> uh, so anyway, yeah, stay tuned for that. All right, hang around. We're going to bring you guys content all day long, it seems like. Uh, thank you to Freesleeve for uh, sponsoring today's episode. Uh, make sure you guys go to freesleeve.com at checkout. Enter promo code POWER25 for 25 percent off your order and free domestic shipping please follow the podcast at mark bell's power project on instagram uh, at mb power project on twitter my instagram is at i am andrew z and see if people want to hit you up how can they do so i didn't see my in yang on instagram and youtube and see me yin yang on twitter mark you know i can't stop thinking about phil deru with his, <laughs> he showed me the oblique kick Ooh. So he did. Okay. He showed it. To I mean, he didn't do it like, you know what I mean? I, I mean, I would just be dead if mm -hmm. he did it, but that's just that little like knee kick that Bones throws out there every once in a while. And he was just saying how they, he thinks at some point they'll just probably ban it because mm -hmm. it just, it's, mm. it just, you can't really, there's too many other things to defend. You know, there's too much shit going on and it's just, uh, just a little quick hitter. But like he just, he just like threw it at me, like mm -hmm. just a, you know, little pawing like kick. And it just, it just tapped my leg, but not even in the right spot. And I was like, oh. I was like, that would just, oh my God, like that would just rip my knee right off. But mm -hmm. where, where are your obliques? Yeah, you're not actually kicking the person in an oblique. I don't know why it's called an oblique kick, but it's just a little front, like a little front mm -hmm. swipe uh, kick to your knee. Yeah, your oblique is like more, in, <laughs> obliques are more in your stomach, I guess. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm at Mark Smelly Bell. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you all later. <laughs>